announcements. So I'm going to take the voice mush off my face long enough to do that. Uh, first thing I want to mention is that neither he nor I know who needs gluten-free wafers at the communion. So if you are one that do, does, please let us know. We have them, but we don't know who you are. I don't see anybody waving around with no face mask on, so everybody's got that message. Okay, I do want to call your attention to the announcement about the back to school and the uh, school supplies because that is something that is different because of the COVID because the school isn't opening as a, as a gathering place and the students will be working uh, at home. So, If you uh, know of anyone who, young people, or have young people of your own, uh, if you need school supplies, please be aware that we do have some that have been collected and we're, they're there to be shared. on vacation and he will be back for the rest of the month of September according to what I've been told but that is the end so we'll be changing over so does anybody else know of any particular thing that needs to be announced I do think of one thing it isn't terribly important right now, but we're only going to be collecting calendars until the middle of January, 17th I think it is. And the reason being that there are no cruise ships coming into the harbor in Seattle, so the need for calendars is much, much less and they just don't need to be inundated with calendars. I've already got a few, and there's a box out in the uh, narthex there, to, or in the hallway actually, to uh, leave some more calendars for 21. Anybody else? Nothing? Okay. Uh, Nancy, I will ask you to make sure you talk with uh, Father Horace uh, after service before you leave because he wants he's got some questions about the 1030 service that I can't answer. Okay.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to God, God forever and ever. Glory to God in the highest and peace to the people on earth. Glory to God in the kingdom. Almighty God the Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And always also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father in law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you. And then they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. Yeah. 
Let us read together the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Bring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the priests and the scribes and be killed on the third day he raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone had become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Well, what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before, the see the, before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Please be seated. 
seated. Because this morning's colic contains so much that is so important, let's take a moment to rehear it. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, and increase in us true religion, nourish us with goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. There are some great verbs in this prayer, truly grand askings to graft, to increase, to nourish, and to keep. As always in the prayer book collects, we are enjoined to ask God to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, the prayer would mean nothing if we could self-graft the love of God onto ourselves, if we could increase true religion by our own devices. The assumption is that, left to ourselves, we increase only in false religion, by which the reformers meant some form of idolatry. This prayer would mean nothing if we feed ourselves with self-engendered and thus illusory goodness, and if we could keep ourselves from the wrong means with natural willpower. The colic's four verbs display the potency of God at the expense of the creatures, that is, our impotence. One of the four petition, petitions requires particular explanation. What is true religion, anyway? for which we are asking the increase. And not just true religion abstractly, but true religion in us. What is personal religion that is also true? And of what does false religion consist? We have a fair picture of how the reformers would have answered such questions. Remember this collect was in the original prayer book, Thomas Cranmer's original prayer book, of 1549. So we're reaching back into the very bowels of the Reformation itself. The Reformer's position is that true religion accepts the full diagnosis of the psychogenetic defect known as sin. For the Reformer's true religion casts all of humanity's hope for release from the original universal defect, that is, original sin, on Jesus. True religion results in and is the cause of the works of love, classically known as love of neighbor, or as what is known as original sin by many of us, among other groups, is the cause of many, if not most, of humanity's ills. The Reformers understood any representative of Christianity that is untrue to any one of these elements as a harming, pastorally cruel phenomenon to be resisted and opposed. False religion disappoints, causes outrageous reactions, fails to heal and give hope to lost people, and, in thousands of ways, maps out the way to God that such a person either winds up in the slough of despair, that is, in deep depression, or on a titanic pyramid of earthborn self-righteousness, False religion, as asserted by this collect, helps no one. True religion, on the other hand, is the great enabler of human and humane goodness. Now, believe it or not, this actually brings us around to Moses. As we heard in this morning's reading, it kind of sounds like God isn't very happy with some folks. These people may very well wind up on the receiving end of a blast of proverbial fire now and have the opportunity to revisit Sodom and Gomorrah. The description we have just heard might today be described as self-centered or perhaps even narcissistic. At the very least, these people have turned away from God to, well, we've just heard what. 
control, slavery, oppression, mm -hmm. all the things we strive not to be. Well, why are things like this included in our scripture? One reason, perhaps, is that it is with these texts that Jesus would have been most familiar. That is, these texts are the ones from which he would have taught. Another reason might be that texts like these carry such abiding truths that they still have meaning for humans in every generation, and not just the generation in which they were finally written down. Like so much in our received scripture, this is very deep stuff. So we should stop for a moment and think about the idea of the history as sacred scripture. When we read our scripture, which purports to be history, we're reading the history of Israel. And while this is history, it is simultaneously the mythology of humanity as a whole, as manifested through that of Israel. That is, along with the political and military accounts that are presented, we are also given a record of God's intervention in human affairs, or put away, put another way, we are studying the dialogue between God and humanity. Okay, you may ask, what does this have to do with Moses? That's a good question. The link has to do with Moses reporting that God has told him that he, God, is unhappy with some people, in this case, the Egyptians. Essentially, the displeasure arises from their being self-centered, for their being unwilling or unable to think beyond their own immediate wants and desires, for which, for the Egyptians and Hebrews, includes the horrors of slavery. Already then, you might say, many of the people I know are like that. Yep. Me too. And that realization provides the perfect segue to talk about one of my very favorite biblical issues, original sin. I can hear somebody thinking, well now that's a leap. Well, yes and no. Yes, because this view doesn't have to do with physical relations. And no, because this view looks behind the story of the garden to see what the underlying issues might be. Now for the record, since there were no reliable, note-taking, third-party witnesses to the events in, in the Garden of Eden, we really do not know what happened. I know that I certainly wasn't there, and I suspect that no one else here was either. So we've got a lovely story which still carries great weight, but which does not of itself appear to have much credible evidence. At the same time, what makes this story absolutely current is that we are dealing with exactly the same issues today. As a result, we have to look deeper, perhaps even beyond the story, to see what might be going on. <clears throat> For me, the underlying issues have nothing to do with apples or snakes or fig leaves or any of the sort. The real underlying issues have to do with the apparent fact that Adam and Eve, co-equally as partners, disobeyed God by thinking only about what harm could there be in eating something, oh, that they had been specifically prohibited from eating. Ah. That is, their, and by extension, our original sin. Put another way, original sin is failing to obey God willfully through personal self-interest, putting personal self-interest in front of everything else. Writing in the depths of World War II, Archbishop William Temple put it this way, we are dealing here with original sin the least popular part of traditional Christianity. It may be expressed in simple terms as follows. Our standard has value, our standard of value is the way that things affect us. Each of us takes our place in the center of our own world. But I am not the center of the world, 
or the standard of reference between good and evil. I am not, but God is. In other words, from the beginning, I put myself in God's place, Temple says. This is my original sin. I was doing it before I could speak, as has everyone else. I am not guilty on this account because I could not help it. But I am from a state of birth in which I shall bring disaster on myself and everyone else unless I can escape it. I am the center of the world I see. Where the horizon is depends on where I stand. Education may make me less self-centered by widening my horizons. But this is like climbing a tower which widens the horizons of my vision while still leaving me at the center as the center of reference. The only way to deliver me from my self-centeredness is by winning my entire heart's devotion, the total allegiance of my will to God. In 1942, Temple wrote those words to a different world, one deep in making existential decisions about itself. I wonder if that world is very different from the one in which we live today. Writing more than 60 years later, another author wrote the same message in a more modern and perhaps less hopeful way. We live in a time of me, and me, and more me. We are obsessed with ourselves and seek to acquire more of what we already have and are so as to defend against the increasingly crushing brutality of a world that is at best callous and immoral. It certainly looks like the name of modern life is me versus the world. As the Old Testament prophets have shown, it is just possible that the world we feel so adversarial toward is also part of us. And that, in fact, we've got it all wrong. The most important part of ourselves may not only be inside us, but also outside of us. Pressing on us now is the need to recognize that in giving ourselves to matters on the outside, we are not giving to the essence of ourselves. We are not working on or building our relationship with God. What both authors are speaking of is the personal cross which Jesus has asked us to pick up and carry. Specifically, we are asked to become more aware and appreciative of who we are, that we may become more aware and appreciative of those around us, whether they be family, friends, people we've never met, or nations in the world. That is, to gradually set aside our self-centeredness as much as we can during one lifetime. That is why we gather to share the Eucharistic feast, why we support the various outreach charities and groups that we support, why we work to give to grow into living the golden rule, or any number of such other pursuits. Each is an act of worship as we grow in knowledge and love of God. As he did with so many things, William Temple said this very eloquently. Worship is the submission of all our nature to God. It is the quickening of consciousness by His holiness, the nourishment of mind by His truth, the purifying of imagination by His beauty, the opening of the heart by His love, the surrender of the will to His purpose, and all of this gathered up in adoration, the most selfless emotion of which our nature is capable and therefore the chief remedy for that very self-centeredness which is our original sin and the source of all actual sin. In the name of the living God, Amen.
to stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all that is seen, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, from the God, 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 life and life, true God, God and true God, be God not made, of one being with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and then was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and of many horses of the scriptures. He has seen it to heaven, heaven, and has seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe, we believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We have acknowledged one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Bishops Justin, Michael, Greg, Ernie. For this congregation, for Ed, John, Robert, Kathy, and Tony. And for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. For the President Donald, and our national, state, and local leaders for words and actions promoting justice and the health and well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble especially Tessa, Chris, Frank, Jim, Dante, Liz, Brandon, Wendy, Mary, Sarah, Tom, Steve, Bill, Collie, Carol, Tracy, Hal, and Jacob. I ask your prayers for all who seek God, for a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those who have died from the coronavirus and their families. Pray for those who have died. <coughs> I ask your prayers for family away from home, for school, work, or military service. Mark, Sonny, Madeline, Robert, Michael, Scott, Andrew, Abilima, Shane, Claire, Jennifer, David, and the crew of the USCG Resolute. <coughs> I ask your thanksgiving for our ministries, especially our vestry. Paul, Gretchen, Nancy, Mary Michael, Jen, 
Ralph, Mary, Kay, and Bob. I ask your prayers for children who are abused, neglected, or hungry, especially those incarcerated in immigration detention centers and victims of human trafficking. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Be present. Be present, O Jesus, our great high priest, as you were present with your disciples. And be known to us in the breaking of bread who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. I'll raise my elbows in your general direction. <laughs> Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right. And right. right. a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave 
and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he the ones in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. <coughs> your, your kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving.